As we come to your word, Holy Spirit, we pray. Open up the deep revelations and the treasures of your word unto us. Speak to our hearts, O Lord, through your word and bless us and open our eyes to see the beautiful treasures and the revelations of God's word to prepare us, O Lord, for your coming. And so, Lord, we commit this time and the word through your Holy Spirit to speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> so this morning uh, we are going to focus on the importance of number 70 in the Word of God. The importance of number 70 in the Word of God. In the Word of God, number 70 is the prophetic word, prophetic number. The number 70 is a prophetic number and that's the reason we need to study what is the importance of number 70 as the word of God says. And our key verse this morning is Isaiah 46 verse 10. Isaiah 46 verse 10. See what the Lord says. The Lord says, I make known the end from the beginning. I make known the end from the beginning. From ancient times, what is still to come? What is still to happen? What is going to happen? The Lord says, I make it known, I reveal it, and then I do it. That is how the Lord does things, you see. Because He knows everything. He knows the whole future. And He knows everything from beginning to the end. Because the Bible says, Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He knows everything. And before anything happens, any major thing that is in the plan of God, He declares it before doing it. That is what this verse is saying. Even when that great flood came in Noah's time, God first announced it, isn't it? Revealed it to Noah and told Noah, you go and tell all people there is a huge flood coming that will destroy the world, but you have chance to get saved. And asked Noah to build a huge ark. And so, maybe one day when you get a time, there is a huge Noah's Ark built in Kentucky, you see. <laughs> it's like a place to go and see. <clears throat> Someone got the idea and built it actually. Now, so the Lord announces anything that happens before at hand. The first thing we want to see is Genesis 11:26. As I said this morning, I'll be focusing on the importance of number 70 in the Bible. Now Genesis 11:26 says that Terah was 70 years. A man called Terah was 70 years old when Abraham was born. So Abraham's dad was 70 years. When Abraham was born, you see. Now Genesis chapter 5 verse 3 says, Adam lived 130 years and Seth was born. Seth was the third son mentioned in the Bible. And so at that time Adam was 130 years, lived 130 years. That is how Bible puts it. Then Genesis 5 5 says, Adam lived 930 years, then he died. Now Jewish scholars predict that Adam lived about 100 years in the Garden of Eden. He was in the Garden of Eden for 100 years. And then Genesis 5, 5 says, Adam, Adam lived 930 years, then he died. Now there are genealogies given in Genesis chapter 5 and then in Genesis chapter 10 and Genesis 11 of all the generations from the all the way from Adam 
And the Jewish scholars, they add up those years, you see. Because they can do that very easily. They can add up those years because the genealogies are given with the generations and how much someone lived and all that. And it comes down to 1948. When they add those years in those genealogies, it comes to 1948, you see, in which Abraham, the forefather of Israel, was born. Isn't that amazing? 1948. Terah was 70 years old when Abraham was born in 1948, while they were adding it with those genealogies and the years. Then we read in Numbers 11.16, Numbers 11.16 about Sanhedrin. Sanhedrin is the supreme Jewish council. And the Lord said to Moses in Numbers 11.16, Bring me 70 of Israel leaders. Again 70, see that? Bring me 70 of Israel leaders. And Moses brought 70 Israel leaders to the Lord. And they were set apart and anointed. And this constitutes the Sanhedrin, the Supreme Council of Jewish leaders, which is still today, okay? It is still there in Israel even today, okay? It's still functioning. And it was made of 70 leaders. Secondly, the number 70 is found in Jeremiah 25 verse 11. It is found in so many places. But I cannot touch all those this morning. Jeremiah 25 verse 11 tells us about 70 years of Babylonian captivity of Israel. This whole country will become a desolate wasteland. And these nations will serve the king of Babylon 70 years. And so the Israel was carried into the Babylonian captivity by King Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylonian empire. It was a world empire. And he came and destroyed the Jerusalem temple that was Solomon's temple. And he destroyed Jerusalem and carried away all the people into slavery. And they stayed in slavery for how many years? 70 years of Babylonian captivity. And after the 70 years were over, they were allowed to go back to their own homeland. And when they came back, the Jews came back to their homeland, in Hezra chapter 3 verse 2, what did Ezra and Nehemiah do? Nehemiah built the walls of Jerusalem that were broken down. And Ezra was the man who was preparing to build the broken down temple, you see. Ezra chapter 3 verse 2. Then Joshua son of Zozadak and his fellow priests and Zerubbabel son of Seatiel and his associates began to build the altar of God of Israel to sacrifice burnt offerings on it in accordance with what is written in the law of Moses the man of God. You see, Ezra built an altar of sacrifice as a prerequisite to build the second Jerusalem temple. So before the Jerusalem temple is built, what did Ezra did? He built an altar of sacrifice and dedicated it to the Lord by sacrificing the lamb on it. Then we read the third thing in Matthew 24, 15 to 16. These are the words of Jesus. Matthew 24, 15 to 16. Jesus predicted the Jews will have to flee the land of Israel again and get scattered into the nations of the world. Reading from verse 15. So when you see standing in the holy place, that is in the temple, the abomination that causes desolation spoken of through the prophet Daniel. Today we read the passage from the Daniel. And Jesus is referring it to, to that. Spoken to, of through the prophet Daniel. Let the reader understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. 
he said there will be again the desolation of the land of israel and jerusalem temple will be broken down again and destroyed and all the jews will have to flee jesus had predicted that this will happen soon after he after him and in the year ad 70 exactly as jesus had told them it happened the jews began to revolt against the rome and they were fighting the roman army and at that time the rome one rome was ruled by the emperor titus and the jewish rebels were fighting from within the jerusalem temple and they kept on fighting for many months you see emperor titus did not wanted to destroy that beautiful golden temple of jerusalem he wanted to preserve it but the fighting was continuing and continuing and the jewish rebels would not give up you see finally the roman soldiers got so fed up and tired that they started throwing burning torches into the jerusalem temple and onto it and it caught fire and when it caught fire all the gold melted you see and ran into the cracks into the floor stones is in into the flooring stones and in order to get those get that gold those soldiers turned up each and every stone and jesus had predicted in john 24 not one stone over the another will be left not even one stone over the another will be left it will happen like that and it exactly happened in ad 70 remember that and the jews got scattered all over the world into the nations of the world fourthly israel was born reborn in 1948 by the balfour declaration of the britain because can you remember their forefather abram was born in 1948 see for the jews and for the israel all the dates and timings are in the word of god and that's why israel is our prophetic time clock remember that for church there are no exact times given but we have to look to the time clock of israel i say as things happen there we come to know what is going to happen to us you see and so by the britain's balfour declaration in 1948 again israel was reborn you see and exactly after 70 years from 1948 exactly after 70 years 1948 it is 2018 last year 2018 president trump moved the us embassy from tel aviv to jerusalem and because of that many other nations moved their embassies to jerusalem making jerusalem the capital of israel wow that is prophetic actually that in our days just few months ago jerusalem became the capital of israel and as soon as jerusalem became the capital of israel you know what they did the sanhedrin the supreme council of 70 jewish leaders it is made up of 70 jewish leaders they made a declaration they ordered that an altar should be built in jerusalem and the lamb should be sacrificed as a prerequisite of building the third jerusalem temple just like ezra did and on december 10 2018 during the festival of hanukkah hanukkah is 
festival of dedication festival of anuka is celebrated to celebrate the dedication of the second temple they do it every year remembering the that second temple they used to celebrate the festival of anuka and during that festival of dedication anuka on december 10 2018 they constructed right there in jerusalem in the old jerusalem the altar according to biblical standards with uncut stones and they invited the sanhedrin invited 70 nations for that occasion again 70 you see they invited 70 nations to come and witness that they have constructed the altar as a prerequisite to the construction of the third temple wow isn't that amazing now let me take you to Daniel 9, 24 to 27, our today's passage, and then I'll close. Daniel 9, 24 to 27, God revealed this prophecy for Israel and the Messiah to prophet Daniel many, many years ago, but now fulfilling in our days. Verse 24, 77s are decreed for your people. Your people means Daniel's people. Who are Daniel's people? Israel, right? Seventy-sevens are decreed for Israel and your holy city. What is holy city? Jerusalem, right. To finish transgression, to put an end to sin, to atone for wickedness, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy place. This is God's plan of atonement of the sins of all the people of the world. And the timings are given, 77s. 77s means 70 multiplied by? Seven is 490 years are to be allowed for the holy city of Jerusalem for the atonement of sins. That is what God planned. Now reading from verse 25. Know and understand this. From the time the word goes out to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until the anointed one, the ruler, comes. Who is the anointed one? Jesus, the Messiah. Until the Messiah comes. Because only through the sacrifice of Jesus, the atonement of sins can take place. You see, without that it cannot. And so until the anointed one, the Messiah comes, there will be seven, sevens, and sixty-two, sevens. It will be rebuilt with streets and trench, but in times of trouble. Verse 26. After the 62 sevens, the anointed one will be put to death. After 62 sevens, that is 62 multiplied by 7. How many years? 434 years. After 434 years, Messiah will be crucified and put to death and the people of the ruler that is emperor titus will come will destroy the city and the sanctuary and the end will come like a flood war will continue until the end and the desolations have been decreed exactly it happened in ad 70 temple and the Jerusalem were destroyed by Emperor Titus and the Jews were scattered. Desolation means the whole place became desolate. The Jews were scattered into the nations of the world. And now reading. And so this verse talked about two things. Seven sevens and 62 sevens and so 62 sevens is 434 years and seven sevens is 49 years seven sevens are 49 
And so if you add 62 plus 7, how many years it is? 69 years. And so exactly after 69 years, in AD 70, Jerusalem was again destroyed and the Jews were scattered. And if you add this year, 69 multiplied by 7, how many years? 483 years. So 483 years prophecy got fulfilled. When the temple was destroyed, Jerusalem was destroyed, Jews were scattered all over the earth into the nations of the world. But God had said how many years it will be for the atonement? 490, isn't it? 77, he had said in the beginning. 490. So how many years prophecy got fulfilled? 483 up to AD 70. Then something happened. For 2000 years, the church came in between. The period of church came in between, which was not announced. And 483 years means still seven years are remaining to be fulfilled. Still that part of prophecy is unfulfilled. It has to take place, you see. And so reading now verse 27. He will confirm. When will those seven years get fulfilled? Now see what God says. He will confirm a covenant with many for one seven. Now only one seven. One seven means only seven years. He will confirm. And then who is this guy? He will. Then let's read further. In the middle of the seven, he will put an end to the sacrifice and offerings. And the temple, and at the temple, he will set up an abomination that causes desolation until the end that is decreed is poured out on him. Now we realize the guy who will stop the sacrifices in the Jerusalem temple will be no other than the Satan himself. Antichrist. The world ruler that is going to come as Satan rules, he will be the false messiah. The Antichrist will come and do this. But this prophecy also tells us that there will be a Jerusalem temple again. The third one, isn't it? The third one will be again very shortly. This tells us that we are in the last generation. We are the last generation Christians now, remember that. Already on December 10, 2018, the altar has already been erected, dedicated, lamb was sacrificed on it, and also they offered grain offerings and peace offerings into the fire on that altar. And so the temple is going to come into existence, the third Jerusalem temple, almost before our eyes. And if that happens, then the anti Antichrist is going to show up, you see. He has to show up. And before he shows up, the Lord has to come to get his church, you see. We read in Matthew 24, verses 30 to 34. You know when in the beginning of Matthew 24, the disciples came to Jesus and they began asking him, that you said, I'm going to my father's house to prepare mansions for you. And from there I'm going to come back. So that I can take you all to be with me where I am. So in Matthew 24 in the beginning verses they began to ask him, When will your coming be? When will your coming be? And Jesus began to answer them. And then he gives the answer here in verse 24. It talks about the fig tree blossoms. 
the fig tree is the sign of Israel in the Bible now learn this lesson from the fig tree words of Jesus that is learn the lesson from Israel he says as soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out you know that the summer is near then you know that the season of my arrival of my coming is very near if they are already preparing to build the third Jerusalem temple and they have already sacrificed and constructed the altar it means the Jews are blossoming the twigs are getting tender and the leaves are coming out and so the time of his coming is very near he said you will know the season not the day not the day only the season even so verse 33 when you see all these things you know that he is near some versions use eat but if you go back to original Greek the original Greek uses he he is near who is who is he Jesus, Jesus is near that is what he said you know that he is near right at the door he has already gotten up from his throne and standing at the door to come anytime you see truly I tell you this generation this generation that has seen these things when Jerusalem became the capital of Israel it started putting out leaves and it twigs getting tender they are now serious the Jews are serious of turning back to the Lord you see and before the Lord begins his dealings with the Jews he has to take out his bride you see from the face of the earth and he said truly I tell you this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened and we read in verse 40 24 40 41 two will be in the field one will be taken and the other left talking about believers and unbelievers that is those who have believed in Jesus the believers will be taken verse 41 two women will be grinding see in the field mostly men go and work in those days you see now after talking about men the Lord focuses his attention on the women and he says two women will be grinding floor at the mill one will be taken the other left therefore keep watch because you do not know on what day on what day your Lord will come and so we know the season we are already in the season of his coming and we are so close to the temple coming into existence again you see so close but my dear friends as believers you got to be ready now we are all almost on the brink you see we are already on the edge of his coming let us pray the number 70 is very important it's a prophetic number already the prophecies of 70 are fulfilled and we are on the verge on the brink of the Lord's coming pray in your heart Lord Jesus I believe in you I'm your believer forgive me of all my sins and cleanse me with your blood and prepare